You may have already watched our previous video, Wood Basics. In this video, we'll continue to look at wood by discussing seasoning, cutting, and sawing techniques, as well as some manufacturing defects that you'll find in wood. Wood in a living tree is known as green. It contains a lot of water. When a tree is chopped down and cut into pieces of lumber for building, it's known as green lumber. But we can't use green lumber in construction because over time, it'll slowly dry out and shrink, causing issues in the construction. So we season our lumber before we use it in construction. Seasoning means it's dried out before it's sold for construction use, thereby minimizing future shrinkage. In order for the wood to be considered seasoned, the moisture content must be 19% or less. There are two methods of seasoning the wood, kiln drying and air drying. Kiln drying is when the wood is placed in a large kiln for several days and heated so that the moisture is drawn out of the wood. Air drying is exactly what it sounds like. The wood is placed in a cool, clean, dry, and shady space and left to air dry, slowly losing its moisture. But here's the catch. Kiln drying can get the moisture content of the wood down to under 10% in just a few days time, while air drying can typically only get the moisture content down to 10 to 20% and it takes months. Here's a review of the reasons why we season lumber before install less tendency to shrink, less tendency to warp, it's stronger, stiffer, and lighter than unseasoned, more resistant to decay, insects, and mold, greater nail holding power, and greater ability to hold paint. When you're looking at types of lumber, you'll see a label stamped on it notifying you whether it's green or seasoned. If you see the marking KD, it means kiln dried. If you see the marking S dry, it's notifying you it's seasoned. If you see SGN or SGRN, that means it's green lumber. It's important to know this so that the correct lumber is purchased for the job. Now let's talk a little bit about cutting wood. There are a few different ways wood can be cut. They are plane sawing, quarter sawing, and riff sawing. The type of cut you specify will affect not only price, but the actual look of the wood as well, and its response to warping. Plain sawn wood is the most common and the cheapest method out there. You can see it cuts straight through the center and uses almost the entire log, leaving very little waste in the process. This gives it a distinct cathedral grain pattern and often a raised grain. It may twist, cup, and wear unevenly. Quarter sawn is the next level up. It's more expensive than plain sawn, but it's also more dimensionally stable. It's done by cutting a log into four quarters and then plain sawing each quarter at an angle. You can see this results in a nice linear grain pattern. Quarter sawn lumber also exhibits almost no twisting, warping, or cupping. It's more resistant to moisture penetration and less prone to surface checking and raised grain. Finally, rift sawn is the most rare and most expensive of the three. It's used for applications that require straight lined grain through and through. These are the most stable of the three, but also the most wasteful to produce. As you can see in the diagram, there are triangles of waste left behind between each and every board but it is without a doubt the most reliable and beautiful cut available. Now with manufacturing comes defects. In our previous wood video, we discussed some natural defects that can occur in wood. Now let's talk about the man-made defects. There are four main manufacturing defects that can occur. Checks, splits, wanes, and warps. Checks are lengthwise separations caused by seasoning. They'll typically look something like this. Splits are lengthwise separations extending from one face to the other, like this here. Wanes are a lack of wood on the edge or corner. You'll see an area like this. 
And finally, warps are a distortion of a member due to shrinkage. Now, there are four types of warpage that can occur. Let's take a quick look at them. There's bowing, crooking, cupping, and twisting. You can find a cheat sheet on everything we covered in this video on our website. Just click the link in the description below. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss new videos. See you next time. If you want to see more ARE study help, practice questions, explanations, and tips for aspiring architects, be sure to subscribe to our channel. And check out our website, linked in the description below. You'll find full-length practice exams, our blog for aspiring architects, and our free ARE playbook.